Oh, it's you. Hello and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be doing a video which I promised almost two years ago. Yes, that's right. I'll be reviewing the Logitech G or SciTech Flight Simulator peripherals. <laughs> A year and a half ago, I made this Facebook poll in which I asked which widow should I make next. Most of the people voted for the review of SciTech Flight Simulator peripherals. But somehow I didn't manage to make that video until now. Oh, and if you haven't already, definitely check out my Facebook account and follow me. I'll put a link in the video description below. So this is my small little flight sim setup. And here we have a yoke, rudder pedals, two throttle quadrants and panels. I will tell you something about each of those pieces. I'll start with the yoke and I think I'll end with the panels. But before we take a look at each peripheral, I'll just show something to you. And that is how I've mounted all of this stuff. Logitech G produces a stand on which you can mount all of these things. But that stand is very expensive and I've came up with another idea. I bought a separate little table, it's a tiny computer table, on which I mounted my whole setup as you can see. So when I want to fly, I just bring this little table, it's on wheels, I just bring it to the computer, plug it in, with USB and that's it then I can fly and getting this desk was really a very good idea so if you will be deciding to buy a setup like mine I definitely recommend uh, you for you to buy also something like this because it's really nice well unless you're making the whole home cockpit then yeah so now let's take a look at each of the different pieces then i'll tell you how it works and how i put it all together and i'll also talk about prices so if we start with the yoke well first of all i'm more of a stick fan than yoke fan and i'm using this trust joystick but i won't talk about this today because today is the day for logitech g so SciTech used to produce two different yokes the proflate yoke which is now being produced by logitech g and the cessna yoke which you can't buy anymore well you can buy two but you can't get a new cessna yoke anymore and I have the Cessna yoke. I will explain the differences between the two and everything. The Cessna yoke is a bit higher grade than the usual ProFlight yoke. And um, it's made a little bit better. It doesn't feel so plasticky. You've got metal on the top here, I think the normal ProFlight yoke doesn't have that and also you've got this logo and it's of course a replica of the yoke from the Cessna piston airplane. The ProFlight yoke 
has a little LCD display, which this one doesn't have, but the display is not so important, is it? And the probably the biggest difference is that you can turn the Cessna yoke 90 degrees into each direction, clockwise and anti-clockwise. But the profile yoke can only be turned 45 degrees into each direction. And that's the biggest difference. And why is it better to have 90 degree angle? Well, because most of the planes have 90 degree rotation in real life. And so if you, for example, flying the 172, it will be exactly as you turn it in the simulator. But with a profile yoke, which turns only 45 degrees into each direction, it will be sudden jump in the simulator because when you will um, turn the yoke to full angle, um, 45 degrees, the yoke will turn 90 degrees in the simulator because you deflected it all the way and that's not the case with this one that's why this one is better so if you're buying a yoke a new yoke right now i don't think i would really recommend a pro flight yoke because you know 90 degree deflection and build quality luckily well this one isn't produced anymore so you can't buy a new Cessna yoke but luckily there's another manufacturer which cooperates with Logitech G and SciTech I think and it's called Honeycomb and they've made a new yoke which is even better than this one it's called the Honeycomb Alpha yoke it's even better quality than this one also costs a bit more and you can turn it 90 degrees into each direction and you can also pull and push it a little more. But that's enough. Now let's take a look at my setup because I promised to review my setup not to talk about some other yokes you can now buy. But oh yeah, another thing. Keep in mind that when I was buying this you couldn't buy the honeycomb yoke because um, it's available since last autumn, I think, it was released, yeah. So, the Cessna yoke. Nice, um, you can definitely push and pull it. It's okay, um, not so much travel distance, but still, and yes, it's got a 90 degree rotation. There's a lot of programmable buttons on it, as you can see. Here you've got some buttons. I use these for zoom, so like this. And then you've got the head switch to look around your cockpit. And another switch, I use it for trim. Another thing I didn't mention, maybe the normal pro flight yoke one you can get today is not such a bad option if you are flying an aircraft like Beechcraft Baron and King Air because in those planes you can't actually turn the yoke all the way to 90 degrees you see this is full deflection in some planes so maybe the pro flight yoke would even be a good option but most of the planes like Cessnas and all the almost all the commercial planes have full 90 degree uh, deflection of the commercial planes. It varies from a plane to plane, but it's generally better to have the 90 degree uh, deflection. So I would consider other yokes if you're buying it now. Well, and of course, I think you can get a used Cessna yoke on eBay. Those are really nice and I think you can pick them up pretty cheap in a perfect condition. In fact, I bought this one used. I'll tell you more about it later. With the yoke, and this applies to the Cessna yoke and the ProFlight yoke, 
comes one of the frontal quadrants. The frontal quadrant, uh, and I bought one additional, the frontal quadrant that comes originally with the yoke comes with this plug and can be plugged into this little connection port on the yoke, like this. It comes with it, it's not additional, but if you get another one, um, it will come with an USB plug, um, which you can also put into the USB hub, which is already integrated to the yoke. The yoke doesn't require any um, additional power, so you just plug it in and you're ready to go. I have a lot of peripherals, so I bought additional USB hubs just for, I don't know, yoke, another throttle quadrant and the rudder pedals. Um, this will do perfectly. So, the throttle quadrants. Well, they're just the basic uh, throttle quadrants. You've got quite a nice travel distance and there are the, those numbers, how much you've opened the throttle. But these might vary a little in different aeroplanes uh, but generally yes it's um, halfway uh, full power 75 percent it's quite easy to move the lever um, because it doesn't have any sort of fancy system so it should be more realistic it's just really basic movement but if you don't care too much about how realistic the throttle is, because that's really not so important when flying, you don't have to feel really the same way unless you really want to. The yoke is much more important to be realistic, because you're practicing your flight, for example, and it has to be realistic. But uh, the throttle doesn't have to be. And these throttles do their jobs perfectly fine. So you've got, um, each throttle comes with three axes and you can of course assign them to whatever action you want. I, for example, have two throttles to prop and two mixture levers. At the bottom of each lever there's a little section where you can put it uh, you can put the lever uh, even more down and it acts like a button. I use, for example, those two for the thrust reversers in the commercial aircraft, in the jet aircraft. The throttle also comes with a lot of buttons, six buttons to each quadrant. Now let's talk a little bit about these caps. One nice thing is that you can just pull this thing out and then replace the caps however you want. But I like to have it like this because black is throttle, blue is prop and the red is mixture. And you can also buy additional caps from other manufacturers so you have actual replicas from airplanes. The very popular, the most popular are I think the Boeing 737 throttles. One disadvantage of those extra levers is that you can't actually assign the thrust reversers if you have those things like in a real airplane, but you can still just um, use it like this. So I think that's it for the throttle quadrants. Now let's take a look at the rudder pedals and oh it's quite dark here isn't it? Um, maybe if I use additional light like this. Okay, so these are the Logitech G or Cytec, um, when before Logitech had uh, taken over Cytec. Well, these are the Cytec Cessna rudder pedals. Um, they are nice pedals, you also can't get them anymore, um, but you can get the Pro Flight pedals because of Logitech is producing them now. So, you just put your legs on and they work like a, any like any rudder pedals would. So you've got your, your axis 
and also you've got the differential toe brakes very nice and there's also a tensioning system so you can change the tension with this rotating knob and what that does is now for example it's easier to move the pedals but if I tighten it it would be harder I think if it's harder it's more realistic but everyone has his own preference the pedals work in pretty much the same way as the still produced Logitech Pro Flight pedals they've also got the tangenting system just the shape of actual pedals is a bit different and you can yeah you can stretch in them so for your legs if you've got larger or smaller feet then you can adjust the length of the actual pedal and but yeah they pretty much similar the function in the same way Cytec also produ produced the combat rudder pedals those were white and um, resembled military aircraft but yeah you can also can't get those ones anymore the only one produced now by Logitech G are the pro flight pedals and they're nice pedals I don't have anything more to say um, having rudder pedals in your simulator is really important because without them you can't fly uh, realistically now let's talk about the most problematic part of this setup the panels and where do I start it's, uh, they are problematic because of software the hardware itself is absolutely fine the panel which works best is the switch panel but it's also the least useful I mean you just get this if you really want all the switches or the physical switches because switches are the things which you really can just um, press with your mouse in the cockpit um, it won't affect your flight I think but yes, they are nice to have. You've also got this gear lever, but as I said, um, it's completely fine just to use your mouse. The more useful panel is the multi panel. I think uh, that was the hardest to get working because you've got the autopilot, and it's really nice to, uh, to just do it here you don't have to play with mouse and trying to get it working in the virtual cockpit it's really nice to have these buttons I will demonstrate them for you later then I've also got the radio panel it's nice to have it if you fly for example online if you use that sim and you want live ATC then it's just fantastic but there were also some problems uh, with it buttons on the switch panel are nice and clicky you've also got the starter um, it's sadly not spring loaded so if you're starting your engine um, you have to put into start and then back to both but it's okay um, it's still a very nice thing you've got all the different lights and different systems and of course as I told you earlier there's also a landing gear lever the autopilot you've got these little buttons to um, activate the autopilot um, and uh, here you can select uh, which thing you want to change for example if I place it to, uh, to heading um, no, no no it's on aspect heading then I can just um, adjust the heading with that knob it's not very precise um, for example you you see it goes by two sometimes and it's hard to 
assign it for to seven, for example, here. No, no, I've done it. The same applies to radio panel, but those knobs are like this. You can, for each place, for example, uh, the big knob is for the first number and the second one is for uh, other number. And then, for example, um, you just try to um, set the frequency and then you press this button and it will go to active frequency. You can also um, set the nav and the squawk code, for example, now you have like this um, one knob is for each of the two places and if you want to switch places you just press this and now I can set the first two. All of these things together are really nice. This is really the ecosystem that works well together. Um, it's nice modular system and as you can see you can mount things one on another. I'll show it just in just a moment. Um, you've got the screws and then you can just place it all together and it stands nicely. The yoke also has holes to mount panels on it. You can see it, uh, for example, here on those panels there are these holes and you can just screw another panel on top of that. One panel I don't have is the instrument panel. Well, Logitech Flight Instruments panel, there's been some issues with them uh, and they're quite expensive so I didn't get one or two or three or how many you want. Um, but yeah, you can also use those ones uh, for the instruments. Now let's talk about the problems I told you about earlier. The problems I think are with Windows and with the drivers. You can download drivers from the Logitech G support site and then you should activate them and it should work in theory, however I've had some problems. Um, in Xplain it worked, I didn't have any problems with that, but in FXX it didn't and I just googled the problem and I found the solution. It wasn't very hard, um, just a few things. Uh, well, it's not so nice because um, they promise that you just plug and play. However, that's not the case. You can have some issues with it. I still have some problems with those uh, panels and the problems are with other panels. Um, radio panel, the problem was it didn't show anything and it didn't work well. So um, when I found the fix, now it uh, only works in one USB port in x -Plane. I don't know why, but it does that. Then the multi-panel, one I've had most problems with. Um, the panel itself worked, however the problem was the screen didn't show anything. So um, I found a fix on the web, on YouTube. You just have to go to the uh, root directory and um, change one number, I think, from one to zero. It's, it's funny, but yeah, and then it worked. But the funniest thing is this panel in x -Plane, um, it works perfectly, I mean the screen works perfectly in x -Plane, but in FSX it only works in one USB port and not always in the same. Uh, I don't know how that's possible, but that's how it is. Um, so from time to time you have to change USB ports in FSX in order for it to work. Now let's talk about the operation of those panels. Um, they really work well after you've dealt with all the issues in FSX. Um, you just... Uh, I'll show it uh, to you. 
So, in FSX, you just um, press the autopilot button, select the, I don't know, heading and altitude, however you want, and then you just press heading and altitude if that's what you want to set. And, for example, the same applies to everything. For example, indicated airspeed, I'll just set, for example, I'm now below 2000, uh, 10,000 feet, so I'll just, uh, I don't know, set 230 and then I will select the auto throttle and press indicated airspeed and now the, uh, the plane uh, flies itself as I want then I can also the gear up lever and everything work just works just fine mm. Uh, and also in the FSX, one thing, sorry because I'm not screen recording, but just like that with camera, um, but it's a quick uh, thing to show you. In FSX, it's really nice because all the switches really work. For example, if I turn off the landing lights, everything works. That's almost always the case with, uh, well, that is the case. Uh, with all the default aircraft in FSX. However, with Aden aircraft, depends. For example, um, those switches don't work with PMDG 737. Um, most of them don't. Or they don't work properly. But with some Adens, uh, it everything works just fine. So now let's also take a look at X-Plane. So in X-Plane the radio panel and the switch panel work just fine. For example, I can start uh, this test now. I, I won't go through the whole uh, procedure, but just um, that you can see that really everything works fine. Um, for example, some switches and mixture. And here we go. And then I just turn it back. And we've started the engine. I know that wasn't the correct procedure. I'm demonstrating, I'm just demonstrating the uh, setup and the whole thing. Um, well, and in x that works just fine. But, um, the, the, the multi-panel is a bit harder to use. I'll just show it to you. So in X-Plane it's a bit harder to use the multi-panel. Now as you can see I've set the heading to 70 and the altitude to um, 8400 feet. I'll just set the vertical speed a bit lower as we are in the Cessna. And now, yeah, it's a bit more confusing because when you press the autopilot button, it starts blinking and then as you press, for example, altitude, it says vertical speed and now it's minus 700 because we were descending at the moment of when I said this. And also the heading is now uh, set to 67 and I didn't do this and it's strange because I can still control the airplane just perfectly with uh, my yoke so then I think if you just press the autopilot well now we, we will stall but uh, whatever um, if you press this button one more time now the autopilot is activated and now the autopilot should be activated, but where well, the autopilot then deactivated because we stalled. But I just wanted to show you um, that yeah, when you when you just set it, for example, um, you press autopilot one time, heading altitude, and then uh, another time, and now it works. Um, as you can see, well, yeah, now it will crash. But I just wanted to show it to you that it's a bit harder, but still, it's completely fine. And we are kind of dead, I think. So, yeah, that's it for the panels and the X-Plane and FSX. In Flight Sim World, I 
I couldn't manage to uh, get the panels working. I don't know why, but uh, no matter what I did, uh, the panels didn't work. Now let's take a look at the yoke and pedals uh, in action just a bit. Now we are in the air in our little Cessna 172. And I just want to show you how everything works. The resolution of the yoke is alright. I mean, um, it senses really small movement, as you can see, uh, movements as you can see. So the turning and everything is really nice and smooth. Also, the pitch works just fine. This yoke, but especially the ProFlight yoke, has a dead zone. So if I do this, you'll see what happens. It stops right there. And that's not what the real plane would do. But it's still nice to have a yoke if you're, pl if you're flying uh, planes with yokes, not... and not sticks. I, for example, as I told you earlier, mostly fly planes with sticks. There are, but I still have a yoke because it's nice to have one for flying like this, isn't it? And yes, as you can see, everything works just fine. Um, also, the rudder pedals, as you can see, so you can really practice turns, for example, if you are learning to fly, um, but of course you can't simulate all the feelings and stuff, but those are nice things to have if you want to have a complimentary setup and don't have money for real home cockpit or really like expensive peripherals like uh, yoke or yoke and stuff like that. Now uh, as you saw everything in action, I will tell you about the prices and how I got this. Um, uh, yeah, um, well, we, we won't talk about that, will we? Uh, now you probably want to know how much a setup like this costs. And I will just um, tell you how, how much everything costs and um, I will then write everything and I will show you. So I bought yoke and rudders second hand for 250 euro which is no 200 yeah yeah 250 euro which is quite an okay price for for both and as they not produced anymore and they're better than the euro Cytec yoke I think that's quite a good price then I paid 80 euro for additional throttle with the postage included um, I bought I also bought radio panel second ha hand for 40 euro and the switch panel and multi panel I bought them from Amazon the switch panel costed 80 euros with postage and multi panel 90 so all of this together comes to 540 euro. So now you know how much it costed. But if I would buy everything new, it would be a lot more. And also the desk was 30 euro, I think. So um, it comes to 570 euro all together. So thank you guys, I hope this video helped you, if you did please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel for more aviation and flight sim content. Goodbye!